let's continue in my um, commentary and finish this uh, out. There's only this paragraph and another paragraph and then a quote from, who is that a quote from? It's probably Tim Haig. Um, nope, it's David Stern, Dr. Stern, the, the late Dr. Stern just passed away recently. And then that'll be the end of the study. So uh, let's keep reading right here at the top of the screen. I go on to say, if Christianity as a representation of the truth of the gospel is to be relevant for unbelieving Jews, and you have to pause and ask, we're talking about Jews who I say in my commentary are seeking a genuine relationship with their God. And this has got to be an important perspective, whether you agree with it or like it or not. Because as an evangelical, as a Catholic, as an Orthodox, as a Christian, no matter which denomination you fall into, Lutheran, Methodist, you know, Episcopalian, uh, uh, um, I'm trying to think, um, Pentecostal, that's the word I was looking for, um, Charismatic, whatever, uh, Baptist, I can't forget those, whatever um, denomination you fall into, if you're seeking to witness to lost people, then sooner or later you're going to probably encounter a Jewish person who's also lost. So you have to remember, um, they are seeking God, and they're see many of them are seeking a Messiah, a personal Messiah. Many of them are seeking a messianic um, concept or idea or um, um, age or a, a, a program or something like that. They're not seeking a personal man named Messiah, but many of them are. And so you've got to consider that, and I say this in my commentary, if you are of that type of Christianity, then your Christianity obviously must never, ever water down the message of the true Messiah as you're seeking to witness to, to Jewish people, all right, the true Messiah Jesus. But it must also, and listen to this, listen up, it must be careful not to present a religion that is incompatible with a genuine Torah respectful lifestyle. And we'll talk more about this next week, but these are some of the implications for Christianity. It's unfortunate that historic Christianity for 2,000 years has kind of just fallen in step with the kind of the default form of Christianity that is actually outwardly offensive to the genuine Torah respectful lifestyle and to religious Jews who are seeking a relationship with God and with a Messiah. This outward form of Gentile Christianity just kind of takes it for granted that Jesus nullified the law of Moses, root, uprooted the laws of Moses and the Jewish lifestyle, and he did away with it because it was incompatible with um, Christianity. Um, and so I continue to, uh, to talk about it this way. To be sure, all well-being Bible students, both Jewish and Gentile alike, this is my opinion, I believe that they would agree that Moshe's lifestyle was not incompatible with Yeshua, right? King David's lifestyle was not incompatible with Yeshua's lifestyle. So we're trying to say that Yeshua lived a Torah observant lifestyle and he lived as a Jewish man and yet he walked obedient to his father. And so if we are to walk as he walked, right? That's what the word Christian implies, Christ-like. If we are to live our lives like the Messiah, then there's certainly nothing that should be incompatible with pursuing a Torah obedient lifestyle because indeed the master lived a Torah obedient lifestyle. I go on to remind us Paul's lifestyle was not incompatible with Yeshua's. Paul could not have practiced a Christianity that was that was somehow at odds with his master's version of Christianity or Judaism. There must have been overlap sufficient enough to recognize Judaism, early Christianity, early Christianity and first century Judaism as essentially almost um, indistinguishable from one another, except for the fact that uh, one group was, say, ethnic Jews and the other were uh, people from the nations. But other than that, um, the, the, uh, the, the value systems were, were identical. I go on to say, and all of these men, right, the people I have my example here, David, Paul, I, last week I talked about Abraham, even though he lived prior to a written Torah, but we could still kind of lump him in here if we wanted to. All of these men, of course, Yeshua included as one of those men, they were all Torah observant and they were all Torah respectful. So these are things that we don't often think about today when we have these discussions in evangelical circles about, you know, should the Christians be under the law of Moses? And before you're so ready to cast your vote as to emphatically no, kind of the knee-jerk reaction answers, no, of course not. Christians aren't um, subject to the law of Moses, of course. 
Of course, they're not obligated to keep the law of Moses or something, right? You know, laws done away with. That's the old system. Before we were so ready to just instantly add our vote to the, uh, the, 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 the discussion that the law of Moses is done away with. Let's stop and ask, what is so wrong with the law of Moses that necessitates its doing away with? Part of God's laws were um, incomplete or um, uh, inefficient. Or um, you know, uh, you know, in need of repair or something like that. The premise I say that Judaism and Christianity are incompatible with one another is, in my opinion, a weak premise at best and a poor uh, exegetical position at worst. All right, let's see how am I doing on time. All right, we still got some time. All right, let's finish this tonight. I go on to uh, so that that's kind of where we left off basically last week, and I just reread that. Let's pick up. Uh, the furthering discussion here in my commentary. I say, the Jew who embraces Jesus does not become, quote, a Jewishless Christian, nor does he need to seek to lose his ancestral ties to Judaism. This, again, is the unfortunate historical um, reality of Christianity for the last 2,000 years, less so more now, which, thank goodness, we're getting less and less of Christianity who champions this idea that Jews need to leave their Judaism behind. I mean, not only is it um, politically incorrect, but it's 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 contrary to the woke um, system that we're kind of uh, uh, em, em, embracing these days, right? It's um, you know, if you if you're trying to say that Jewish people can't live their lives as Jews and be Christians at the same time, imagine some woke Jew is gonna you know go on online or on on news or somewhere. Get in his Twitter account and uh, start, uh, um, uh, you know, telling you how uh, uh, politically incorrect that is to say that, and you know, and blah blah blah, and you're going to get in trouble. You're going to have to uh, apologize and such and such. But 